This is the Sector 150, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build it. It's a cinematic style quadcopter made for slow, stabilized footage. This isn't a very difficult build and should make for a great introduction to quad building. So first let's take a look at the parts. We've got the HDLRC Sector 150 frame. The bottom plate is 3mm thick with chamfered edges, and the top plate is 2mm thick. It's not a ducted frame, but it does come with a set of four prop guards, a TPU antenna mount with crossfire and diversity antenna support, an HD camera mount for your GoPro, a DJI air unit mount, which we won't be using, Emacs Eco 1407 4100 KV motors, the FD435 stack with a 35 amp ESC and 20 millimeter F4 flight controller, the AKK Race 200 milliwatt VTX, the Foxeer Razor Micro CMOS camera, and the Jumper R1 FR Sky compatible receiver. So let's get started. First we want to mount the motors to the frame. This is only temporary, so just use a couple shorter screws. We'll come back and add the prop guards at the end with longer screws. While the frame kit came with a variety of screws, you want to use the ones that came with the stack. And since we aren't using nylon standoffs to hold the screws in place, I thought it would be a good idea just to use some painter's tape to hold them in while we uh, do all the soldering. But I did decide to use the black spacers from the frame kit rather than the red ones that came with the stack. Now, I made a mistake here. I mounted the ESC board backwards. Make sure the white connector points toward the front of the frame, which is longer and more rectangular. Anyway, here's how to solder the motor wires. First, you want to apply flux to all the pads and fill the little grooves with solder. I like to start from right to left, cutting one wire at a time. Just be careful not to cut your wires too short. It's a lot easier if you zip tie the wires to the arms just to keep them all straight. You want the wires to fit into the grooves vertically, and it doesn't take much more than a tap of the iron to solder them in place. Now, give yourself a pat in the back, because the hardest part is done. Next, let's solder the battery lead. You'll use the same process as before, with a little flux, and a fair bit of solder here, because we've got bigger wires to attach. Fortunately, the stack came with a pre-made XT30 connector, so all you need to do is solder it to the board. Uh, what I like to do is loosen the balls of solder with the iron, and then just poke the wires in. They also included a nice beefy 1000 microfarad capacitor, so let's add that. Place it under the power lead and tack it onto the same solders that you used earlier. Trim the excess wire and you can even add a little bit of solder to give it a nice shiny finish. Now it's time to mount the flight controller. Use the same spacers you used before. Make sure the white connector is at the bottom of the board and it lines up with the white connector on the 4-in-1 ESC. Now you can connect the flight controller to the 4-in-1 ESC using the included cable. And now you can finish it off with these little nuts. Now make sure you don't screw them too tight because the little spacers between the boards will just compress more and more. You just want to make sure the flight controller is level and that the screws don't wiggle. Now let's attach the receiver. So I took out the RSSI wire because that's only for RSSI over OSD. But since this receiver supports full telemetry, I figured I would let my radio handle that for me. Now, you can leave that wire if you'd like and just solder it to the RSSI pad on the flight controller, and that way you can have it recorded in your OSD. Now, let's bind the receiver. So, I like to clamp down the bind button and use a little alligator clip to hold it in place. That frees up a hand to connect the battery. And connect the battery, you'll see the red and green lights show up on the receiver. That means it's in bind mode. Then you put your radio into bind mode. And once you do that, and you get a proper bind, you'll see the red light start flashing. Now you can unplug the battery, take the radio out of bind mode, and disconnect the bind button. Let's test our bind by plugging the battery back in, and we should see a green light. Okay, we're all bound and ready to go. Now let's mount the camera. Use the longer 6mm screws from the frame kit to hold the camera between the brackets, and slide the aluminum standoffs through the holes and mount it to the base plate. Use the three-wire connector that came with the camera, and give the wires enough slack to tilt the camera through a range of angles. Now just solder the wires to the 5 volt ground and cam pads at the front of the flight controller. Once you've done that, it's always a good idea to give the wires a little tug with your tweezers to make sure they've got a solid connection. Now before you solder the VTX, make sure you desolder these two wires. We don't need 5 volt out or the ground. Solder the remaining four wires to the ground video input, 5 volt, and TX2 pads on the side of the flight controller. Once you've finished this up, you're all done soldering. Next, let's secure the receiver and mount the antennas. You can just slide it into the capacitor. It's not going to go anywhere. Now let's mount the antenna holder. Make sure you've got the standoffs in there and screw it in through the bottom plate. 
feed the antennas through and cap them with the straws that came with the frame. And you want to get these in here good and tight because these straws do pop off in a crash, so you might even want to secure them with some hot glue or tape. Feed the SMA connector through the antenna mount before plugging it into the VTX because you don't want to put any stress on the board while you're doing this. Get it on there good and tight and then you can attach your antenna. And before you plug in the VTX, get a little bit of shrink tube and cover the gold connector here that we're plugging in. I didn't do it here, but I came back later because I found it was touching one of the components on the flight controller and we don't want any shorts. Now this frame isn't designed for this third row of standoffs, but I put them here anyway so I can give the battery lead a little anchor point. Now before we put the top plate on, let's test the VTX and camera make sure we've got a video feed. Looks good. Now we can put the top plate on. And you'll notice that the third row of screws don't line up with the standoffs, and that is because those holes are for the DJI mount, which we didn't use. So if you use those extra standoffs, you can't screw them to the top plate. Now these prop cards were designed for smaller motors, so you've got to drill this hole out a little bit. I used a 3 inch bit, and you want to make sure the motors all spin freely. And make sure you mount all the prop guards correctly, otherwise they'll block the motor wires. And when you stick the battery pad on, make sure this beveled edge points toward the back. You can see where the cutouts on the top plate fit it just perfectly. Before you put the props on, you'll need to plug this into your computer and get it set up. You'll need a USB cable and a Windows, Mac, or Linux computer. For a step-by-step -step guide, follow the link in the description to rotorbuilds.com to learn how to configure this particular quad. And let's see how we did on the scale. The dry weight is 186 grams, which is pretty good for a Cinewhoop. I used the included camera mount, but it's 25 degrees, which is a tad high for instead of whoop. I added a little battery pad under the camera to help reduce the angle, as most Cinewhoop pilots use a 10 degree mount that wraps around the camera for protection. Anyway, let's take this for a test flight. So I really like this type of quad because it lends itself to a nice casual flight. And if you're delicate on the sticks, you can get some pretty neat footage. With an 850 milliamp hour 4S battery, you'll get about 3 to 4 minutes of flight time. If you use an XT60 battery lead, you can try a larger battery, like a 1300 milliamp hour, and get over 5 minutes. But it'll fly a little heavier. Uh, don't expect DJI flight times on a quad like this. These little quads have a lot more power, so you can kind of think of them like uh, sports cars. Uh, here I'm flying in angle mode with a 10 degree angle on the camera. This will fly acro just fine and it's quite fast, but um, you need to be careful not to break the prop guards in a crash. Buy a couple spare sets or just leave them off if you plan to fly acro. Um, they're mainly for indoor and proximity flight. With a GoPro, the motors might get a little hot, so what I did was reduce the pitch and roll uh, max D values by about 20% in beta flight. Um, they don't get very hot and it flies pretty well. I also set up the RPM filter, but that's optional. The setup instructions are linked in the description. If you haven't built a quad before, this would make a good first build. The solder pads are easy to work with, and it comes together really well. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments or on the written guide at rotorbuilds.com. I developed Rotorbuilds, so if you build this or any quad, please submit it to the site. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more FPV related content and thank you for watching. Bye.